Hi everyone, welcome to Junior Church. We've got a change of scene today. We are in my office. Uh, hopefully you can't see too much of the mess behind me. Just see kind of, you know, boxes that sh hide everything. So welcome, welcome to Junior Church. I uh, hope you've had a great week. Uh, again, sun sunshine, some of you, um, I don't know, maybe some of you are in school. Uh, whatever your week has been, I hope you have been blessed. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, I must apologise first of all, um, because I forgot to mention this last week, but I want to say thank you, Will, for sending me pictures of your Lego. I loved it, so many pictures and some cute little things. And uh, I believe it's Ninjago Lego, so thank you for that. I haven't got any Ninjago Lego myself, so it's great to see the different sets that are out there. And also, thank you, Harriet, again for some encouraging comments. I'm glad you are watching and you're getting something out of it. So thank you, guys. If you feel you want to comment, please do. I'd love to hear what you think of what's going on, whether I can change things, do things differently. Please do let me know. Um, so we looked, we started to look at the fruits of the spirit last week and we talked about love. So uh, we are, let me just remind you of that verse that tells us the fruits of the spirit is Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self control so we looked at love last week and then so this week the second uh, fruit so to speak uh, are the the characteristics the gifts uh, or not the gifts of the spirit but the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit if that makes sense the second one in our list is joy so what is joy well you might be thinking that joy and happiness um, are the same, but I can tell you they aren't. What do you think are the differences between joy and happiness? So I want you to pause the video, have a chat with, we're going to get straight into some discussion. Pause the video, chat with whoever's in the room with you. What do you think is the difference between joy and happiness? S well, so the dictionary definition of joy is this. The emotion of great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying or keen pleasure or elation. Okay, so bear that in mind. That's what the dictionary definition is. Whereas the dictionary of uh, the definition of happy in the dictionary is delighted, pleased, contentment, joy. So the dictionary basically says they're the same. But the fruit of the spirit, it doesn't say the fruit of the spirit are love, happiness. So because we're looking at the fruit of the Spirit and we're looking joy in a biblical content, then we're going to read the Bible. It makes sense, doesn't it? We don't take our references from the dictionary. They're really helpful. However, there's often de biblical definitions which are different from everyday English uh, language definitions. So I want you to think, when we read the passage, can you think, is there joy, is there happiness? Um, and, and are they interchangeable? So can you substitute happy for joy? Um, we read it. Um, but before we read and shed some light on the differences um, or whether they're the same, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can meet together today in this way. Thank you that we can study your word. Thank you that we can learn something, uh, maybe something small that we didn't know before, or this might be a really big thing that we have, find that we had no understanding of before. So Lord, we pray that you would guide us, you would speak to us through your word, 
that you would open our hearts to understanding your word and what it means for us too. Lord, we thank you that we can learn about you and through your word that we can lo love you more and we thank you that you love us so very much. Amen. Our by right reading today is taken from Acts chapter 16 verses 16 to 40 and what we're going to do is we're going to read a couple of verses I'm going to pose a question sometimes it'll be a pause and a chat sometimes it'll just be uh, a little bit of an opinion or something like that so that should give you enough time to find it in the bible if not you can always pa pause it at any point can't you so we are looking at act 16 uh, verses 16 through to 40 and the title is I'm looking at the wrong chapter. That wouldn't be helpful, would it? Paul and Silas are thrown in prison. Now, remember, throughout all of this, we're thinking about happiness or joy. Are they the same? Um, and actually, when you, see, when you hear that heading, Paul and Silas thrown into prison, you, I don't know, if you like me, you question, hang on. Has she gone totally mad? What can this have to do with joy? And we think about the definition of joy. So, let's start. We're just going to read a couple of them. One day, we were going to the place of prayer. Now, the we are um, Paul, Silas, Timothy and Luke. Luke is obviously the, the writer of Acts, so that's why it's the we. Luke, who's written it, is actually, this is his first-hand account. So we were going to the place of prayer. On the way, we were met by a female slave. She had a spirit that helped her tell people what was going to happen. She earned lots of money for her owners by doing this. She followed Paul and the rest of us around. She shouted, These men serve the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became upset. Turning around, he spoke to the spirit that was in her. In the name of Jesus Christ, he said, I command you to come out of her. At that very moment, the spirit left the woman. Okay, so thinking about every uh, everything is underlying, we've got to keep at the back of our mind, happiness and joy. Um, now the spirit that's talked about in verse 16 is a demon spirit. Okay, so have you come across any points that you can say, oh yeah, yeah, I can see happiness and I can see, or I can see joy in those couple of verses. Pause the video if you need to reread them. Have a think and then chat with whoever's in the room with you. Now, I thought as I was reading that, um, you know, there's a you can think of happiness or joy that these men are going to join friends in prayer. That's a good, that's a happy thing. Um, and the spirit... The demon spirit. Now, when I put demon spirit in, because some versions have demon spirit, it kind of gives you not quite a happy feeling. So I think, mm, OK, spirit in the girl is not going to be a happy thing. She followed them around. And then Paul, he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. That is the spirit. And the spirit left the woman. Now, I thought, you know what? whether you thought the same thing, that must be a time of celebration, a time of joy, a time of happiness. To have this demon spirit in her, it must have been awful controlling her body. Well, let's continue and let's find out. My thoughts are we have had a happy or a joyous uh, event. Let's continue. We're going to read 19 to 24. Her owners realised that their hope of making money was gone. So they grabbed Paul and Silas, they dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them to the judges. These men are Jews, her owner said. They are making trouble in our city. They are suggesting practices that are against the Roman law. 
These are practices we can't accept or take part in. The crowd joined the attack against Paul and Silas. The judges ordered that Paul and Silas be stripped and beaten with rods. They were whipped without mercy. Then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put Paul and Silas deep inside the prison. He fastened their feet so they couldn't get away. So what initially, I certainly thought, oh, that's a really happy thing. It's not, doesn't seem. So do you think, are, is, are we now feeling happiness and joy? Are there other emotions going on? So I want you to think, I, I think we can probably agree there's no happiness, there's no joy now, thinking uh, after hearing that. So I want you to pause the video and I now want you to start looking through the people who are involved. What emotions do we now see? So pause and chat. What emotions have, have, are we feeling in this couple of verse, verses? Now, I can have my opinion. Obviously, these are just my opinions and you might agree, you might disagree, and that's absolutely fine. Um... You've got the slave girl's owners. They are angry because they were earning money from her telling telling fortunes. A fortune teller, she was telling money. Uh, telling fortunes, they received money. She can't do that job anymore. So they're angry. They are angry at Paul and Silas who are involved with, or Paul particularly, because he's the one who released this demon through Jesus' power, remember? It's not under under Paul's strength or Paul's power he's done it in the name of Jesus so he's doing it through Jesus's um, power but Paul is the one speaking the word so he gets the brunt of it he's got the anger I imagine of the owners um, I think also they were you know they were kind of um, uh, angry at the girl because she couldn't work so they kind of dis probably dismissed her from whatever they couldn't use her anymore so she is now not able to earn any money. So, although we didn't aren't refer to her in this couple of verses, I can we have to take into account she's part of this uh, this this true story. So she would have felt upset, sad. How is she going to earn money now? Um. So, Paul and Silas, fear. I think they were grabbed or seized some versions might say dragged to the marketplace to face the authorities confusion why are they why is this happening then i'm sure they because they are falsely accused there must have been anger frustration disappointment because they had done a kind thing they'd released this girl uh, from having this demon possessing her it was a kind thing, it was a helpful thing, but it's not seen as that. So they're disappointed that the act has, has caused this. Um, so I don't think there's any joy this, or any happiness. According to those dip, de, uh, dictionary definitions, there's none going on, is there? I can imagine sadness and helplessness. What are Paul and Silas to do? They've been thrown into prison and not just thrown into prison they've been told to be securely kept in prison so they're put in chains okay let's carry on and we're going to think about as i read it think about emotions that you're hearing and then we'll pause again after these these, these few verses so verses 25 to 28 about midnight paul and silas were praying they were also singing hymns to god the other prisoners were listening to them Suddenly, there was a powerful earthquake. It shook the prison from top to bottom. All at once, the prison doors flew open. Everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. He saw that the prison door was open. He pulled out his sword and was going to kill himself. He thought the prisoners had escaped. Don't harm yourself, Paul shouted. We're all here. The jailer called out for some lights. He rushed in. Shaking with fear, he fell down in... Oh, I've gone too far. Oh, no. We're going to stop that. Don't harm yourself, Paul shouted. We're all here. 
forget what I just read after that. We'll come to that in a minute. So what emotions do you uh, believe there happened in that? Pause the video, have a chat. Now I know when I'm happy, I find myself singing. You know, I might be dancing um, because it's a good feeling, isn't it? When you're happy, when you're, you know, if we think of what we, we you know, what we are kind of thinking about joy and happiness, you kind of do these things. So you might be dancing around, if you're like me, jigging around and having a sing. Now, Paul and Silas were singing hymns. Does that mean they were happy, that they were uh, joy? Uh, feeling joy. Now remember these definitions. Happy is being delighted, pleased and content. I don't know. They're singing. Maybe they are delighted. I'm just thinking of their situation. They're locked in the prison. They're chained up. It, does that make mean that they're delighted? Not so sure. Let's think about joy then. Joy is the great delight. A happiness caused by something exceptionally good happening. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but being locked up in a prison, chained up, for no good reason, uh, so falsely imprisoned, is that an exceptionally good situation or a circumstance? I don't think so. So I don't think there's joy. We've got the earthquake. Is that a happy situation? No. There's fear. There's dread, it's kind of uh, thinking the worst can happen is that, you know, the prison falls in, they get crushed, so a lot of fear. But then the chains come loose. What emotion would you feel then? I think relief and and that just that kind of um, the adrenaline rush, the courage that actually it's OK, we can escape. We can, we're not going to be killed in the earthquake. But then you have so that's Paul and Silas think about the the uh, the jailer the jailer uh, he sees we well, wakes up sees the prison doors open it must be that feeling that you know kind of his dr his stomach just drops it's that heavy feeling that that panic that you know he's in charge of these prisoners they've escaped oh no the consequences of that it's really fearful and we, we can tell how fearful he is because he pulls out his sword. He's ready to kill himself. He would rather kill himself than face punishment from the authorities for allowing the prisoners to set free. doesn't matter the reason why the prisoners are freed. Uh, you know, natural causes. It's like insurance, isn't it? Some things. If it's uh, a natural cause, uh, it, an act of God, they call it. So severe weather, things like that, sometimes you cannot not covered by insurance. So it's a bit like that. The authorities don't care if there was an earthquake that caused the doors to open and the prisoners to escape. The punishment falls upon the jailer who was in charge. So rather than facing that, he gets ready to kill himself. But Paul shouts out, so don't harm yourself. We're, so, we're all here. Well, my goodness me, the relief that must have come with that from the for the jailer. Immense. So he doesn't uh, then kill himself. He calls for the light. But he, we are told that he rushed in shaking with fear. So he's got all of these emotions churning up. Fear still because of everything. It's, it's just that adrenaline coursing through his body, isn't it? And then he falls down in front of Paul and Silas. So we could maybe attribute, well, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think there's any happiness or joy in this passage because even though they're singing hymns, it doesn't fit in with the definitions of happiness and joy. So Let's carry on. Let's go on and read. Now, I gave you a sneaky little peek, didn't I, of verse 29, but we're going to read 29 through to 34. The jailer... Oh, yes. Oh, and I repeated it then, didn't I? Never mind. So we'll read it. Jailer called out for some lights. He rushed in, shaking with fear. He fell down in front of Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out. He asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. They spoke the word of the Lord to him. They also spoke to all the others in his house. 
At that hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas and washed their wounds. Right away, he and everyone who lived with him were baptised. The jailer brought them into his house. He set a meal in front of them. He and everyone who lived with him were filled with joy. They had become believers in God. Okay, so what emotions there? Pause the video, have a chat. Okay, so we are told, as I said, I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? In verse 29, still shaken with fear, the, the, the jailer, he falls down in front of them. Now I can imagine then actually, yeah, there's fear, but then there's that relief. The uh, confirmation that, yeah, the prisoners are still there. So it that kind of relief takes over. Then he brought them out and he asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's this realisation and he's recognising God is at work. So something has changed. They're safe um, and, and he's not going to be punished. I don't quite, not sure, you know, it's kind of an emotion. So maybe there's happiness there and maybe there's joy there. You know, thinking about joy as being great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good. Well, actually, the fact that the prisoners are there is an exceptionally good outcome for the jailer. So maybe there is some joy there, according to that definition. Uh, now, Paul and Silas, hearing those words, how, what must I do to be saved? They must have felt joy Something exceptionally good has happened there, so they must be feeling joy there, I am sure. Then uh, they talk to him. So again, I think there's that uh, a, a love coming through, a love for um, an, another believer that's coming through there. And then he, he takes them, even though it's late at night, the jailer takes them uh, to his house. They speak the word, but he looks after them. He washes their wounds. He feeds them. So Paul and Silas, I'm sure, are feeling a lot of gratitude, a lot of love and a lot of appreciation. Now, quite clearly, it says in verse 34, uh, he, that is the jailer, and everyone who lived with him were filled with joy they had become believers in God. So there we go. Something exceptionally good has happened. They are feeling joy. He's accepted and his family have accepted Jesus as his saviour. Um, an exceptionally good thing. And everyone was baptised. Let's continue then. Verse 35 to 40. So this is the end of our passage. Early in the morning, the judges sent their officers to the jailer. They ordered him, let those men go. The jailer told Paul, the judges have ordered me to set you and Silas free. You can leave now. Go in peace. But Paul replied to the officers, they beat us in public, he said. We weren't given a trial and we are Roman citizens. They threw us into prison and now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let them come themselves and personally lead us out. The officers reported this to the judges. When the judges heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they became afraid. So they came and said they were sorry. They led them out of the prison. Then they asked them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house. There they met with the brothers and sisters. They told them to be brave. Then they left. Okay, what kind of emotions are you thinking there? Pause and have a chat. I can imagine Paul and Silas are feeling hurt, annoyed, disappointed. They were treated very badly and then just kind of dismissed. Go, just go, just go and be quiet about it. Angry then because they were asked to leave quietly. Well, hang on, that's injustice. They're, it's unfair. You know, they may, there's that anger, that, that, that and disbelief, isn't it, of, of how they've been treated and then totally dismissed. 
But then I reckon there was happiness because they were able to go to Lydia's house. Lydia uh, was a believer that came that became a believer because she heard Paul preaching. So Paul knew Lydia and he went to the house where Lydia and the other believers met. There was no synagogue in Philippi because there weren't enough Jews. So the the church, the Jew, the the um there was no uh, place of worship for them to be. So they were meeting as believers, as a group of believers, in Lydia's house. So he went there, they went there, and um, encouraged Lydia. But they were also sad because they were having to leave. They were leaving and they hadn't had much of an opportunity to tell people of Jesus. So there's a bit of frustration as well. So a real roller coaster of emotions going on. So there might be just a couple of times in that passage that we can say there was a there was maybe a little bit of happiness, a hint of, but we do know that we're told there was joy. So there's one occasion. But if we look at the passage using the biblic biblical knowledge, Christian joy instead of worldly joy, then we know that the fruit of the Spirit is joy. So the fruit of the Spirit, so we know it's a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't, it's not because of circumstances, because what's going on around you is because you've been filled with the Spirit. So it's almost being filled with the fruit despite what's going on. So we know that Paul and Silas are filled with the Spirit because they're believers. So they will be experiencing joy. Now, we are told that um, the joy is in the time when the, the jailer, everyone, in verse 34, they were filled with joy. Well, John Piper, he's a well-known Christian teacher, pastor and author, and he defines joy as this. Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit, as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Word, so that's the Bible and the Scriptures, and in the world. So it's not just focusing on the Bible, but it's everywhere. It's seeing that joy um, that is produced by the good feeling in your soul, um, it, it, it doesn't, you know, it's caused by the Holy Spirit. And it overflows towards God because the Holy Spirit is working in us. So joy isn't because of our surroundings, it's because the Holy Spirit is in us. So we have joy at all times. Whereas happiness is an emotion we experience based on what's going on at the moment. You know, things like, you know, opening gifts. Uh, so if you opened a present, um, so that in excitement, anticipation, you open it, you go, oh, brilliant, it's the Lego set I wanted, fantastic. You're happy. You open it, start building, and then you, you find out that half the pieces are missing. Well, you're not happy anymore, are you? You're sad. The happiness has been taken away by the circumstances, so it depends on, happiness is, is based on what's going on around you, your situations, and it's an external uh, thing. So if joy was based on the circumstances, we couldn't hold on to it. But joy isn't based on our success or the things we do, it's based on Jesus. So we can only have that joy by knowing Jesus, knowing that we have an eternal life through Jesus, accepting him as our Lord and Saviour. And because when we choose to follow Jesus, the result of that is we are filled with the Spirit. So we are filled with the fruit of the Spirit. We are filled with joy. Do you think that gets taken away from you? It doesn't, because you have accepted Jesus. So we have joy in our lives, no matter what's going on. If things are going wrong around us, we have joy. So now, when we refer to the Bible passage, we can see joy. Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas have joy throughout all these situations that they find when we thought it was all negative emotions. They are, they have joy because they're filled with the Spirit. Now it's more apparent when circumstances are going well. So, you know, 
we can experience joy or we're more more aware of joy if things are going good but um so the outward sign that we can see the joy in this passage is when they're singing their hymns they're praising and singing hymns they're praying to god now the other prisoners probably surprised to hear that um some may have thought oh just you know i want to go to sleep others would have listened and would have um thought i want what they've got so even within the context of our prison there were people they were they were um teaching and preaching to those prisoners now they could only do this because they had uh grown close to jesus and we can experience this joy and show it more and more by growing closer to Jesus and that's reading, studying the Bible, praying, praising him through words and songs and having fellowship with other Christians. And when we do that, the fruit of the Spirit grows in us so that we can show others what God's love looks like. We're able to be joyful in all circumstances because we can praise God at all times even when things are tricky we look for and thank god for the blessings that he's given us even when it feels like everything else has gone wrong so what makes joy possible at all times even when things are bad or tricky romans 15:13 says may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not of our doing, is it? It's God, the Holy Spirit, and what Jesus has done for us. God fills us with joy. And the verse doesn't say, may you have joy at all times, or may God help you keep your joy. It says, may God fill you with joy. So we are constantly being filled with the fruit of the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, with joy. I'd like you to join me in the kitchen. I've got something to show you. Okay, so this is us. I'm going to draw a happy face. Okay, so that's us feeling happy. Now on this one, which is slightly different, I'm going to draw a joyful face. Now on surface value you think, no, they don't look any different. But if we think about when we're good, we're happy because good things happen to us. And when things are going our own way, you know, it could be maybe your mum said, oh, I've made your favorite pudding for, for tea. Uh, your friend's coming over to stay, absolutely fantastic. Um, whatever makes you happy, isn't it? You know, these circumstances make you happy. But what happens when things don't go our way? There's no longer any dessert. Your mum said, actually, I'm too tired. I can't cook. I just can't be bothered. There's no dessert. Okay, not happy anymore. What if your friend says, I, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing other things. I've double booked. I can't come and see you. You're not happy anymore? So if we imagine that this lighter represents when the things, um, things that might happen that are not um, great. Well, no, actually. So these are things that happen in our lives, okay? And when bad things happen, so right now these are bad things, what's going to happen to our happiness? Shall we see? Remember, this is happiness. So bad things happen, things change. Our happiness disappears, yeah? It's all based on what's going on around us. It's circumstances that make us happy. Now, this is where joy is different. So, our joy. We are, I don't know if you can just make it out. I put some water in this and the water represents that when we choose to follow Jesus, we become believers and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit, of course, is, along with the other eight, is joy. Now, 
fruit of the spirit, it doesn't go away, it doesn't change. So joy is still inside you even when circumstances change. So you might feel sad, but you still have joy. So things change, but what happens? Joy doesn't go away. You still have joy. So thinking about when we're filled with the spirit, we are filled with joy all the time. So when whatever the circumstances are around us, we still have joy, but happiness, it changes. It can change so quickly. It can go, you can be really, really happy and then the situation changes and then you're really, really sad. So we still have joy inside us even when our situation isn't great, a tricky situation or things go bad. Now Pro Proverbs 10 verse 28 says, the prospect of, right, of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked can do nothing. So those who are right with God, so are righteous, choose to follow Jesus and they will have joy. So our joy is tied to the gospel. It's tied to the good news that Jesus died for our sins and rose again three days later so we can have eternal life. And when we put our faith in things of this world, we're going to be disappointed. But when we put our faith in Jesus, we have a hope and extends, it goes beyond our current situation, what's going on right now, because it takes us, our faith takes us to beyond now and into that hope of the eternal life with Jesus. So, in conclusion, there's going to be circumstances in your life when you just don't have any joy, or so you think. No matter how hard you try, you just can't get that feeling of what you think is joy, but what you're looking for is happiness. The joy is inside you. Life might seem so dark you can't imagine joy being possible. And that's when you turn to God. He's the God of hope and he is our hope. And because of that hope, we're able to have joy no matter what. So just a final couple of thoughts. God promises that when we place our faith in Jesus, he will love us, never give up on us. God is more perfect than anything in this world, which means that he can promise eternal life, forever love, and that he will never leave us. So next time you face a tough situation, think about Paul and Silas in prison, that's quite tough. Try to shift your focus from thinking about whether you're happy, which is of course a temporary feeling, to knowing you have joy, no matter what is going on around you. And we can choose to have joy because God's promises are true and will never change. So the more you grow in your relationship with Jesus, the easier it is to live out the fruit of the Spirit. And then, of course, we can show others what God's love looks like. And now this is why Paul and Silas were able to sing praises to God in prison. Their situation wasn't a happy one. But because they were filled with the Spirit, they were able to choose joy. And to choose to worship and praise, even though they weren't happy. And all of that was because they knew God's promises are true and will never change. So in all situations, instead of looking at yourself and seeing yourself in the situation and thinking... Why am I not happy? And kind of dwelling on the situation that's making you not happy. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Feel the blessings that God, Jesus has bestowed on us, that God has given us, and give thanks for those. And when you give thanks to Jesus for what he has done, you recognize the joy in your life. The situation may not change around you, but you have joy because you trust Jesus and God will fill you. So you have joy all the time. So just remember that and let's finish with prayer. We thank you God for the fruit of the Spirit, especially joy. 
We pray that you would fill us with your joy this week so that we can worship and praise you no matter what our circumstances are, whether we are happy or sad. Please help us to want to grow in our relationship with Jesus by reading our Bible, praying and worshipping so that you will be, we will be able to find it easier to live out the fruit of the Spirit and show others what your love looks like. We can only do this with your help, so please help each of us this week. We pray. Amen. Now one final thing to show you. If you're interested, you can switch off if you want. I'm going to talk Lego. Bag four has resulted in the gingerbread house looking like this. So bag four was the second floor, extra bits of chimney, roof with pretty icingy bits or snow bits and sweeties looking quite cute. Windows, fresh windows. And then if I turn it around, we have an upstairs, and look at that, bathroom. A gingerbread house bathroom. And ginger, Mr. Gingerbread is already soaking in the bath, but I think he needs to remember not to stay in too late because we all know what happens if you dip your biscuit in your tea for too long, falls off. We don't want Mr. Gingerbread's leg falling off, do we? That would be rather unfortunate. So there you go, that's bag four. And I've got bag five to complete. Now, it was my birthday on Friday. Yay, a year older, more grey hair. Um, so join me, I, I just join me in singing happy birthday for me, would you? I'd love that. Okay, jo if it was your birthday, you can substitute your name in, but otherwise just sing for me, would you? I would make me so happy. Okay, join me. Happy birthday to you, happy Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Rhiannon, happy birthday to you. Marvellous stuff. And guess what I had for my birthday, you'll never guess. Ha ha ha, awesome. There you go. Awesome. But that wasn't all, you know what, I'm super, super spoilt. Look at this one! So watch out gingerbread house will be finished next week keep your eyes open because i may not resist i may have to build all in one session or i might do it in bits but i can guarantee there's going to be more lego to show so love, show me your lego please i don't want to be the only one in the world who's building lego at the minute so share with me okay everyone thanks for joining me uh hope you enjoyed hope you've learned something and you can take it and apply it to your life this week take care and i will see you all very soon bye